How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Swapping out from uh, some reserve 27s here. Upgrading because bigger is better. I'm gonna put something nice, build this thing up even faster than it already is. Uh, cracked my old frame, so I'm on a 2019, just a update. Sorry for the crappy video, but there's nobody on YouTube that has 37s yet. Until now. So, I was going to do a custom wheel build set. Custom wheel set build. Yeah, there we go. And use the same rims, same hubs, same spokes, everything, but just do a different color. And it's way more expensive to do it custom than it is just to buy them complete, um, that color. Obviously, I got all the tools for that and all the tension meter, the torque wrenches, uh, the truing stands, everything. So I'm set up, but uh, it's kind of settled for less, but not really less. Same thing, different color. I'm really excited to see how these turn out. I'm uh, kind of tripping out on how wide the tire actually blows up to when it's mounted and everything. So got some 2.6 Maxxis tires. I'm going to throw those on there. I'm uh, swapping the rotors right now. I'm going to do the cassette, make sure everything gets torqued properly. Um, yeah, so y'all. Just another note here to add, I do have Cushcore set up in here, running like 18 pounds in the front and 22 in the rear. Seems to be working well. There's a 2.6 Nobby Nick on here now, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, Nobby Nick. Um, I do have Cushcore on the way for the wider rims. I've been running that for a while. Uh, I'll never go back, but unfortunately I'm just going to ride these for a couple days until the plus size Cush Core comes in. These ones are pretty chewed up anyway, so just for now, just so you guys know, I swear by Cush Core, but I'm just gonna ride a little easy today just so I can get these rims on the next Nomad we're building, but we'll see. Here's just a quick difference between the DT Swiss and the i9 Torch. Got 54 points of engagement. Very well taken care of hub, serviced uh, every other ride, just because I'm a mechanic, why not? Here's the i9, it's still quiet, it's not broken in. So a little over twice as many points of engagement. Very exciting. Oh, and another thing I did here with the E13 cassette, in case you're wondering, yeah, you're going to get some noise out of it, especially if you're a hard... Uh, enduro rider uh, Greasing it. Yeah, big deal. That'll do the job. That's what they say to do with it. Keep it clean. But yeah, yeah, yeah But the problem is is right in here at the uh, contact points. They want to slide around So what I did is just got some gorilla tape and put it on the contact points I actually used to do this with scooter bearings inside of metal core wheels because it would over ovalize the uh, the bearing contact surface so I'd tape the bearings and press them back in there to keep them from rattling around and I did the same thing here yeah whatever sounds kind of sketchy but instantly took care of the problems and has not no not a peep out of it since then normally you'd have a little bit of cassette chatter if you're in like the top two rings on a on this planetary gear whatever you want to call it you kind of hear the gear and want to rattle around a little bit so I did that and it locked in way tighter and it works perfect so do that higher on mounted here on the 37 and looking at it next to the 27, it's like, oh, okay, that's, that's a cool looking wheel. That's, that's all right. And then this thing is like, I, it looks like a dirt bike wheel. It looks like the front wheel off a dirt bike. It's massive. Absolutely massive. You got a 2.6 on there, and I'm putting my hand around it, extra large size gloves, and I can like barely touch the rim with my middle finger and thumb. Just totally girthy. Can't wait to ride it. We'll do a side by side here. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, Sa same wheel, same size tire pretty much. But wider rim. Wow. Yes, I pumped it up with a floor pump because that's how you gotta make it in life. All installed here, they look massive still got plenty of clearance thanks to fox and santa cruz for that oh yeah plenty try to get you guys a good look here all the way down on the sides and the linkage down there yep 
The only problem I'm having is my LG1 uh, chain guard is hitting the knobbies right here. So I'm going to take it off and run it through the bench grinder real quick. Yeah. Alright, got it all wrapped up here. Uh, wheels on, wheels installed. Shifted is tuning. Tu shifted is tuned. Um, got the brakes all aligned as they should be. And I put this goat link on. Uh, stupid cell phone. There we go. Hey, yeah, look, it's got a goat on there. And uh, if there's anyone out there that's running Shimano everything and then has that E13 cassette on there and it doesn't shift, especially into the second to last gear here, uh, this goat link just made my life way better. I cannot believe how much it improved shifting. So, yeah, that's that. Tires are ridiculously wide. Um, we'll see how that goes. Get the cush core on. Uh, if you got any questions, let me know. Um, yeah, the fork's got the uh, Luft cap from Vorsprung. That's incredible. I'm really into uh, little items here and there that'll make the bike's performance spectacular. Yeah. Um, sweet. Here, I got the uh, got the chain guard grinded down a little bit there so I can clear the tire. Again, I apologize for the cell phone video. And the backside, the reason it's grinding so much is because I actually had to space it out. I'm going to try to get it to focus here. Uh, yeah, right in there, you can see that. I got a couple uh, washers and grinded a flat side on them so they fix those bolts are so close together. And I had to space out the entire unit right here because in the high gears, it was just grinding so much in here. So there's a lot of little things I do to the bike to fine tune it and get it running better. And another thing I did here is I used a uh, 12 tooth narrow wide SRAM pulley off an XX1 uh, derailleur and I used that just simply to guide it into the gears quicker and it made a huge difference uh, how quick it got in the gears and, and shifting performance and noise because these are not metal ones. I was using KCNC ones before and they just didn't cut it. And I just took the Shimano guide pulley and used that as a tension pulley simply because the teeth are just way bigger on it. They do a way better job of holding the chain where it belongs rather than the tiny ones. I don't know if you've seen Shimano derailers, but they got teeth like half the size of this and it's ridiculous. So yeah, I'll try to run you through shifting real quick. I'm going to try to hold my phone with my chin. And if it skips a gear, I'm sorry, just believe me that it rides different on the bike because once sag is applied, your derailleur is actually at a different point. So your B-tension screw is technically in a different spot. So just pretend it shifts good in case it misses something. Start from the top. close enough yeah never gets that gear oh there it goes 